Aloha everyone. Welcome to another episode of Staying Young at Heart. My name is Maria Mera. I'm going to be your host and I'm also a financial advisor with Edward Jones. And um, you know, at Young at Heart, we, we like to cover all kinds of topics, but today is probably one of my favorites and I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. We're going to explore how to stay healthy through food. And uh, I brought my guest today, uh, she's a trained cook, and she's also the author of uh, one of the best-selling books uh, on Amazon. Uh, one of the books that uh, talks about um, how to bring farm to table. The name of the book, I, uh, I'm having trouble pronouncing I hope you guys understand me, but I'm going to <laughs> ask her for help. So the name is Bustles and Feast, and my guest is uh, Rina Thoma. Rina, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. I'm awesome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just uh, out of the uh, of the door here, please, Bustle some bit and feast. Tell us a little bit about the title and how you came up with that title and uh, and 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 pronunciate it properly, please. Yeah, bushels and feast. I think I think your pronunciation sounded great. Um, <laughs> When I was um, working on some of the marketing for the book, this was before I had a title for the book, I just wrote the sentence. Um, so it was something like trans transforming bushels of real food ingredients into healthy, delicious, everyday feasts. And I'm looking at this sentence and I just saw bushels and feasts. And I just I just knew that was it. I, I had the title of my book and it was, it was towards the very end, almost close to when I was about to launch the book, I still didn't have a title. And it just, I, as soon as I saw it, I knew. That, that was it, right? Sometimes you just fall in love with, <laughs> with the title of your book, but that's, that's uh, so what are you passionate about? What is the, what is the, really the reason why you wrote the book? And uh, I, you, you said a little bit just to inspire, uh, but in, in your own words, what is, what is your mission statement? Uh, there was just, you know, there's so many things. I, I think, um, you know, I'm, I just, I love food so much. I mean, that's why I went to culinary school. I just wanted to learn how to cook really, really well. Um, I loved food. I loved cooking. You know, that was my upbringing. And then when I went to culinary school, I just, I went to culinary school in San Francisco, California, and I just fell in love with the farm to table culture there in California. I fell in love with the restaurants, the chefs, the farmers. Um, you know, I was in Napa Valley and Sonoma and wine country and, you know, experiencing farm to table cuisine at its best. And, um, you know, I was very, very inspired by that. And, and, you know, my husband and I, um, shortly after that moved to, to Europe and we were in, spent a lot of time in France and they have such a huge farm to table culture there. It was just, I just saw how these two worlds. Let's, let me let me stop you right there. Just for those who are not so familiar with the farm to table um, theory or, or the basis of it, um, what does farm to table uh, mean? Farm to table basically means that um, um, we'll, we'll use a restaurant for an example. A restaurant um, will have um, a relationship with a farm and they get all their fruits and vegetables. They get all their grass-fed beef and pork and pastured chickens. And, and, and um, it's, their menu typically changes, if not daily, weekly, depending on what's in season, what's available, what's at its peak of freshness, of ripeness. And so when you eat at a farm to table restaurant, and these are all over San Francisco, all over California, you're, it's really a reflection of the market and, and what's available. And in turn, the food is just so unbelievably amazing and delicious. It's like <laughs> and, and, and we'll get into your travels and maybe more towards the second part of the so. Um, and but I, I want you to compare a little bit um, the you, you keep saying farm to table in California, which I uh, experienced myself living there for nine years. But um, do you since since we both live in Hawaii and most of our viewers are in Hawaii, did you find uh, did you find it easy to find that farm to table? Uh, well, I. <laughs> I live in Honolulu, and um, have you been to Merriman's by chance? <laughs> Merriman, uh, yeah. he's a great chef, and his restaurant is farm to table, and it's right down the street from me. Um, 
you know, I think, you know, there's not a lot of farm to table restaurants here, but there are, there are a lot of chefs who are paying attention to the seasons and that their menus do change with the seasons. And I love that. I don't, you know, um, I don't have to eat at farm to table restaurants, and I, I, but I love to, um, yeah. because and I, we, and we support our own local, uh, people, right. I, and actually I met you at a farmer's market. That's funny. Yeah. Of, <laughs> yeah. So we're obviously both supporting that. Um, is, is that something that like, let's say for people who are starting, is that something that you would recommend to go to farmer's market and buy there? Or it really doesn't matter where you buy um, your food? Um, I think a lot of people don't pay a lot of, uh, pay, pay a lot of attention to, you know, where their food comes from and where they're buying their food. Um, but I, you know, with my book, I really wanted to inspire people to, to do that a little more often. Um, I really wanted to inspire people to go to the farmer's market, you know, go there and have fun there. There's so many amazing farmers and artisans selling the things that they make by hand, not just food, but, um, you know, little beautiful wood, little dishes. And they're, they're true artists, um, you yeah. know, selling their honey and just selling their um, jewelry and selling. And then, of course, the farmers are selling the most beautiful. You cannot get ingredients at the grocery store like what you're going to find at the farmer's market at least not as fresh right if nothing else the logistics oh. to bring it yeah yeah, yeah. so let me let me ask you one question because we have we have a lot of good recipes to show to our viewers today and i think they are going to enjoy just even the pictures um your the cookies 170 recipes right yes and they focus on um gluten free and grain free Yes. So I, tell me a little bit more about that. Why, why did you go that route? Because you can do farm to table and just not need to do gluten free. Yes. So after I graduated culinary school, I was probably the unhealthiest I had ever been. I was definitely the heaviest I had ever been, but my skin was a complete disaster. Um, I just had this really painful cystic acne and I've always struggled with with acne and and so you know not only was I wanting to lose the weight that I get in culinary school I just wanted to look better and feel better and I just said you know I have to figure this out and so I just started doing a ton of research and I um I found a book called the paleo solution and which talks a lot about ancestral health and eliminating um a lot of these uh, you know, eliminating things like gluten from your diet, trying to get back to the way we ate before the development of agriculture. And so I started doing that and it just completely changed my life. Not only did I lose all the weight and more um, that I gained in culinary school, but I, my skin looked better than it ever has. Um, I just felt so much better. I, I really thought that you know, bloating and gas and those sorts of things were just normal. And, it, and, you know, once I just eliminated certain things from my diet, I, I didn't have those things. I just felt amazing. And, and, and so did my husband. And, and um, so we just, yeah, that what, what souls outside is also is, is goes inside. Right. Um, yeah. So are you an advocate for gluten-free for everybody or, or, only for people who you know need it or I you know I'm I'm kind of like you know you just really have to find something that works for you you have to find a diet that makes you feel good um, but if I were and I'm not a health expert but if but I've done so much research and I pay attention and I follow the experts that have real uh, you know that that ha that can refer to for, you know professional journals and science and research that say that you know what three things that you can eliminate from your diet that will make you healthier is and one of those things is gluten um, and it's not like you can never eat bread again or eat pizza again or eat your pastries again but maybe just um, you know find. A, other I would be a very sad person if I don't eat bread again. Me too. <laughs> I, believe me, when I, when I, you know, said, okay, I'm going to eliminate this from my diet, I think I cried eating. Oh, I, I was like, 
You mean I could never eat cereal again or pasta or you know, all those things. But now we have so many amazing alternatives for, yeah. we don't need to eat white flour. We can eat, you know, almond flour and coconut flour and cassava flour. And there's so many other flours that are just healthier for you. And I think now the research shows that, you know, gluten does ca cause a lot of inflammation in your gut. And if you, you read about gut health, you'll find that you know, it causes, it does cause a lot of inflammation in your gut and in your organs. And it's just not all that healthy for you. And there's just so many other healthier things. That you yeah. If nothing else, um, educate yourself. Right. And, and I would love, um, Eric, if you can, I guess we're going to show pictures of your recipes. So, um, people sure. can enjoy that, but, uh, it's, like I'm thinking of, of uh, my niece, right, who goes to uh, the university and uh, she, she starts cooking by herself. Um, mm -hmm. What would you recommend for someone who starts cooking and she doesn't, um, how, how do you choose the healthiest alternatives or uh, for people who are initiating into into cooking? You know, um, I, I think it's very, very simple. And, you know, whenever I'm um, putting together a plate of food, whether it's for me or for my, gir my little girls, it's, okay, 50% of the plate is going to be fruits and vegetables. And then 25% is going to be some sort of healthy protein, some sort of meat or fish. And then the other 25% is going to be some sort of healthy fat, like nut butters or avocado or nuts. Yeah, uh, avocado, like you're speaking my language now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking everything you're saying. Also, but it basically, it doesn't have to be obsessive of weighting everything you eat. It's just look at your plate and a little bit of uh, portion wise, right? Yes, yes. And so that's, that's how I I'm always, you know, whenever I'm cooking, whenever I'm eating, like to, grocery shopping, it's yeah. things I'm focusing on. I, I yeah. like, I, I don't know if you agree with this, but I like to make my plate look pretty. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if this is something that you would suggest to, or uh, is, is that something like, at least it, if, if it's look pretty and appetizing, it seems like it fits, it fits you more. <laughs> Definitely. And I can, I can help you or anyone with that I, I love food styling and I'll, I'll let you I'll let you cook for me anytime you want. <laughs> I'll take I'll take you up for that um so of those 170 recipes could you pick one or two that are your favorite or, or your fall to meals that you usually or, or that you would recommend Yes, um, I always tell people to my the two that are sticking out in my head are the um, the blue cheese stuffed dates with brown butter and lime zest. It's and so I think we got the picture there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I love you know it's just blue cheese inside of the dates and you just roll it around in some butter and and you cook it so that the butter browns and and if you've never had brown butter it looks and it's it smells amazing yeah. but it tastes amazing. Okay. And, and then with some lime zest on that, it's just so simple, but it's it's like the perfect bite of food that you'll ever have. And and um, you know, I've had people try it and just get goosebumps on their arms. And just, <laughs> it's the most amazing bite of food I've ever had in my entire life. So um, that's something that I make whenever I have people over. That's that's what I'll make. It's just a little appetizer. Um, I'll, I'll make you that. Know, you know, you're gonna blow them away. Yes. And then my other favorite recipe is um, my roasted chicken uh, with tarragon cream sauce. And it's just a, a, ch a whole chicken and you just rub it down with butter and garlic and, uh, and fresh herbs. And then you, after it's done cooking, you finish it off with a little bit of um, cream and fresh tarragon. And it is just, it is just one of those things that, um, this is how you're, how you're describing it. Um, I think I can already sense how much you like it and how much you, you, you're passionate about it. <laughs> um, let's, it. Let's do a little break here and I will, we'll be right back. Just uh, one minute and we'll be back with Rina Thoma. Thank you for joining us.
Welcome back to our show, staying young at heart. We are joined today by Rina Thoma, a cook and uh, the best-selling author of uh, a farm-to-table book, Puzzles and Feasts. And uh, we were talking before the break, um, Rina, about uh, your favorite recipes. I, I wanted to follow up on that. Um, is there any Hawaii local dish that you found that you're like, okay, this one, they nail it or it has all the ingredients and all the uh, one that really you would be happy to join in the recipes of your book. Okay, so like a recipe that's not in my cookbook, but- But one. it's Hawaiian, so something local from Hawaii. Okay, so um, at Miraman's, um, which is right down the street, Peter Miraman, I have his cookbook and um, his restaurant is very farm to table. He has this dish. It's like um, if you have if you've ever had escargot, which I'm sure you probably have. I have, yes. <laughs> okay. So he does like an escargot with taco, which is like squid. Oh. And it's um, I believe it is fished here locally, um, and it's amazing. So he's taking his. Okay, hold on. Escargot are like snails. Yes, so it's. So, it's but not, these snails yeah. are picking the ocean because snails are not usually. Unfortunately, I learned this when I was a kid. They are not <laughs> picking the ocean. Correct. They come from gardens. Yeah, and uh, so he gets this taco, which is like squid. So he puts that in like the escargot dish with okay. the butter and the garlic and the herbs and. Um, brings it out and he makes this like amazing ho like house made bread and you just put it on there and you and it is it is delicious so yeah okay oh, although I'm not sure that it's very Hawaiian right like okay the loco moco. <laughs> no, no but yeah but I, I yeah that 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 it, that will pass as Hawaiian because it's cooked here right Yes, yes. And, you know, he's using local ingredients, um, too. So, um, okay. So did I answer your question or did you want a more? Uh, that, that one is, that one is good enough. <laughs> that one is good enough, but, um, anything, um, any other thing from Hawaii that you find, um, more appealing that you think uh, you've explored so much right in and so many cu uh, cuisines around the world is there anything in hawaii that you're like um this is better here than anywhere else okay um okay. i really yes i really really when i came back to hawaii that was the first thing i had to have i missed it yeah. nobody it just doesn't it doesn't taste as good anywhere else than here. I love, 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 love the poke. Um, so I, I eat that all the time. I really enjoy that. Um, you know, I love a loco moco every once in a while. Why not, uh, right? Yeah. Nobody so, else eats a loco moco like they do it in Hawaii. <laughs> they probably don't do it. Um, so Rina, you describe yourself as an army wife. And, yeah. uh, and the mother of two beautiful girls. And uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit about the concept of an army wife. My husband and I have been together for 20 years. We met when I was 20 years old. He was in the army, he was in medical school. And um, we, you know, I have just been following him around the world. Um, we are both from um, Pennsylvania. We moved out here to Hawaii. That's where he did residency. We lived in San Francisco. We lived in Germany. Um, we lived in uh, Seoul, South Korea for a year and um, now back here in um, Hawaii. And, um, you know, it's, it's not easy being an army wife or a military wife. You, you move around a lot. Mm -hmm. And so you really don't have an opportunity to really create anything of your own to stay in one place or one job for for a long time to be able yeah. to climb a corporate ladder and do so you, do you feel like um um i mean yours sounds like a super successful story and i congratulate you for that um yeah just to play devil's advocate here but do you feel like you lose your identity a little bit and uh and i'm sure your husband is amazing but so i don't want to but but yes, oh, no. you know you know, um, 
you know, a lot of army wives have a really, really hard time. And I have definitely, my identity has always been my husband. And um, I've always been, you know, you know, the hardest question for me to answer was people would always be like, well, what do you do? What do you do? And yeah, that was always really hard for me. And, and I'm, and I would just, well, just make them those dates with blue cheese and they will know. <laughs> they will know. <laughs> I just, you know, would say I, uh, I support my husband and right now I'm working here and, but we're moving and, you know, a, a well, year. It's, it's a team, right? Yours is a team. It's not a, an individual um, sport. <laughs> yes. And so, um, you know, this, this cookbook really gave me an, a new identity, which is one of the things that I'm so grateful for. And it's been, you know, one of the, the greatest gifts that I received since I, since I um, started working on this cookbook. So of all those places that you've been to, uh, which one is your favorite as far as we've seen? And you've yeah. been to Spain, so don't disappoint. <laughs> well, I do have to say that, um, St. Sebastian was my best food trip that I've ever had. I oh mean, my goodness. It was, I mean, the food is unlike anything anywhere else. It is, I, it is only something that people would have to experience to understand. Yeah. Those, those pinchos and yeah, that's very something and that piece. Um, yeah, now you were oh, talking about you. your, you were talking about the chicken before I can talk about that sivas and, <laughs> and the cocochas. Did you try the cocochas? It's, the, it's like the second chin of the sivas or the cod. Um, I think so. The, yeah. I have an amazing itinerary and I went to like all the, ma the, the major uh, places of where to go in. And there was probably like 10, 12 different places that we went in, in over the weekend. And you just go from place to place to place and have a couple things here and a couple things there. And um, the ingredients, the quality of the ingredients are like anything I've ever had. And if you go to the market I and mean, the markets there, they're the most amazing markets that I've ever seen. So it, you know, it really does start with the, the markets and the quality of the ingredients and, and uh, the access to the ingredients that they have there. It's really amazing. So um, if, you, if you could choose a place to live, which one would it be? You know, um, it just, it changes. Sometimes I, you know, my husband, I mean, he loves to ski and he, lo he loves the food in France and he loves the mountains in France and Mount Blanc and Chamonix and you know, all that. So he's like, I wanna die in France. And, um, you know, I go back and forth between Italy and, and France. And um, yeah. yeah you know. Do you think, is, are there any plans to um, maybe move there yeah. back again? Oh, yes, yes. You know, we are, you know, within the year, we are moving back to the East Coast and we're so excited to get back to the East Coast and then just be so much closer to Europe because yeah. we really want to, um, we really want to show our girls Europe and take them there as, you know, and spend a lot of time traveling in Europe as a family. Yeah, and so, it's, it's definitely really far from here. It's not. It is um, so far. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it takes a while. How, how do you see or what are your plans for the next five years or how do you see uh, writing another book or uh, what do you think your plans will be? Yes, I, um, you know, I, I think it would be so lovely to write another book and this time it'd be about me and my life and my childhood, the food of my childhood. I am um, Italian. I grew up in a very Italian household and I, I really want to dig into to, to Italian food and explore that cuisine um, a little bit more and and recreate the dishes of my childhood and recreate dishes that you know that um, that I love now as, a, as an adult and having been now all over Italy and having all these amazing Italian cookbooks and so so yeah I would love to do a cookbook inspired by my life and, and Italian cuisine and also um, food that really um, defines me as a person, which is, you know, so many different things. I've been so many different places and have experienced so many different amazing cuisines. And then so the, and then there's a part of me that is like, I would love to have my own line of pretty little dishes for little girls. And, 
you know, I, I just, I collected beautiful dishes all over Europe and at flea markets and, and you'll see them in my book. And I love looking at them. I think they're so beautiful. And I just, I would love little girls to have, you know, Th those that types. Option. So uh, are your kids into cooking with you or um, do they like your food? What do they say? Sophia is three and a half and she loves everything that I cook. She um, and she wants to be in the kitchen with me and wants to do everything. But she makes a huge mess and, um, <laughs> and so dangerous for her. But um, I'll, you know, she wants to st always stir the pot. And, um, so, so I, I want my girls to be a part of what I do. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to do it or finish it because I wasn't sure if I was going to actually finish the book. I, you know, was having baby work. Yeah. Yes. And, and I, you know, I just didn't know if I, if I wanted to sacrifice what I knew I would have to sacrifice to finish it. But, um, so, but I, I said, you know what? I want my girls to be a part of this. I want them to, I want them to be in this world of, yeah. of food and culture. And food. I'm sure just by looking at you, they are learning. Um, so yeah. just to wrap it up, um, Rina, if they, if someone wants to see your book or see your work, so, so we send them to your website or yeah. what last words you, they, you want to share with our viewers today? Yes, um, if you're, yes, you can absolutely go to my website, ladolcerina.com, and um, you can read more about me there. I have tons of free content on my website, all, all sorts of recipes on there that you can print out. You can also um, look at the full book, um, and, and you can, there's a link there that'll take you straight to amazon.com. You can buy my hardcover book. My ebook is available as well. And, um, you know, I, I really created this book and wrote this book because I had so much to share and it's, it's not about me. It's about my experiences and all of this beautiful food that I have been so blessed to have experienced. And I just want other people to experience it as well. And I hope that I'm able to inspire people to, you know, just transform real food ingredients into healthy, delicious food. So thank you very much, Rina. Um, you're an inspiration. I think uh, I, I think just by your words and how you're expressing yourself, uh, we can see your love and just trying to um, to make a difference. So, and I, I can tell everybody if you go to ladolcerina.com, you're gonna get hungry. Those um, recipes look amazing. Um, thank you very much. Um, we we would love to um, we would love to have everybody back at staying young at heart. Thank you, Rina, for joining us one more time and uh, happy Aloha Tuesday, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.